Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with roasted red potatoes. That's right, I can't believe I haven't shown you this yet. It's such a classic go-to potato side dish recipe. There's only a couple things you have to do, and if you do those things, you're talking intense potato side dish pleasure. So here we go. So the first two and most important things you're gonna need is a heavy duty roasting pan and a good generous amount of olive oil. Now, as far as the pan, I like the cast iron glazed versions. This will also work in a metal roasting pan or a ceramic baking dish. Your times might vary a little bit from what I'm using, but it should still work. So once we have our baking dish and we have a generous amount of olive oil in the bottom, we're gonna place in our washed and cut red potatoes. Now I'm using a very cool fingerling variety of red potato. I think these are called red thumb or red blush or red rose. I don't know, I can't remember. It had red in the name. And you can see that right there, kind of pretty. Yes, I believe that is potato blood. Anyway, I just cut them in uniform chunks. We don't worry that much about the exact size, the exact measurement, as long as we cut all the pieces about the same size. I'm gonna make sure those are tossed and coated completely in the olive oil. I'm gonna go ahead and add some very simple seasonings. I'm gonna put some fresh thyme leaves, and I'm using thyme this time, but sometimes I like to use rosemary which I think is also incredibly delicious. They're very resinous and aromatic, and it really works well with a roasted potato. All right, after the thyme, I'm gonna sprinkle with kosher salt, of course, generously. I'm also gonna add some freshly ground black pepper. I almost feel foolish saying it over and over, because I know you'd never, ever use pre-ground black pepper from a can. And if you do, so embarrassing, get a real pepper grinder, come on. And then what's kind of the secret ingredient, I'm gonna take half a red bell pepper that I just cut in like one inch cubes, I'm gonna throw that in, and you really don't need to do anything at this point except throw it in a 400 degree oven for 30 minutes. Don't touch it, don't do anything, just leave it alone. And then 30 minutes later, come back, pull it out, and give it the first official tossing. So we're gonna get in there with a big spoon. You can also use a spatula, and you just wanna toss everything best you can. Now, the potatoes may or may not be released from the bottom, meaning the crust may have formed enough where you can just simply move it, or it's still kind of stuck to the bottom. That means the crust still has not formed yet. Don't panic, don't be nervous, and whatever you do, do not get agitated. I don't want you smashing these all to pieces. So toss what you can, all right? We're gonna put that back in the oven for another 20 minutes. And at this point, they're gonna be getting close, and we're gonna give them another toss, only this time a little more strategic of a toss. We're gonna to kind of move them around and whenever I see a dark side that was obviously touching the pan and got kind of crispy and brown, I'll rotate that so a light part of that piece of potato is actually touching the bottom. We're gonna put that back in for 15 minutes. And you're thinking, that's a lot of cooking. One of the secrets to great roasted potatoes is a long enough cooking process. After 15 minutes, they should be done. They should kind of look like that. You can test them, but you know. At this point, I like to turn off the heat and I just leave them in the oven for another 15 minutes while I get whatever I'm serving them with finished. And that's it. I'm gonna pull those out. I'm gonna give them one last toss. And there's something about that last 15 minutes in the oven that just makes them even more awesome. And by the way, the reason for those red bell pepper pieces they're gonna caramelize really dark, as you can see, totally fine. Those are gonna impart an almost bittersweet, smoky, peppery flavor to the potato. So do not be afraid of those charred ends. That's absolutely how you want it. And of course, you're gonna taste and adjust the seasonings here, all right? There is no cost to be the boss of your own potato side dish. So you decide how to finish this. I just did a little more salt, maybe a little cayenne. I know you didn't see me put it in, but just because you don't see me put it in does not mean it's not in there. Sometimes I add it in private. So we're gonna serve those up, and I'm sorry, but there is nothing that's not incredible looking about that plate of potatoes. And you know what those are really good next to? Literally anything, including nothing. That's right, I would be more than happy just to eat this plate of potatoes alone, but for any main course where you want a potato alongside, this is a beautiful choice. Let me taste one of these just for fun. So perfect, outside crusty, inside creamy and delicious. And of course you got that red pepper on there, so much more than just a visual accent, really adds a tremendous amount of flavor and interest to this recipe. So I really hope you give that a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.